Hello, today we're going to be looking at MOSFETs. So we've already looked at JFETs. What are MOSFETs? Well, MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. Kind of a mouthful. There are two kinds of MOSFETs. There are what are known as DE, or Depletion Enhancement MOSFETs. So there's a depletion mode of operation and an enhancement mode of operation. And then there's also the E-only, E-type MOSFET. And they operate on a similar sort of basis. Um, let's start with the DE MOSFET. We would be looking at a structure, something along this line. So I'm going to draw... Basically down here we have a P substrate. I am going to draw an N channel version of this. So this material right here is N. We would have typical connections of source and drain. Now unlike a junction fat, which relies on the use of a PN junction, the uh, MOS fat doesn't do that. In fact, what we have here is an insulation layer. All right, so we'll just say that's an insulation layer. And then there's a metallization layer on top of that. Now, if we were to hook up some external circuitry, sort of the basic thing we could do would be to have a resistor out here off the drain, the drain power supply. Bring this back to common. I'll do the same thing with the source. And then we can put in a uh, gate power supply. I'm going to use a negative gate power supply just like we would with a J, uh, JFET. And we'll also have a little gate resistor in here. All right, how does this device work? Well, I'm going to use electron flow just like we did with the JFETs. So I'll do a little dotted line here. What's going to happen is this N channel, because we have no voltage, I'm going to start with zero volts back here. There's some finite resistance you can imagine based on the doping level, the physical characteristics, and we will get a current that flows through here. All right, out back through VDD. And if we were to draw that in terms of a transconductance curve, All right, so here's ID, here's our VGS, What we're describing right now is some current flowing through here. This is the IDSS, the same thing that we had with um, our uh, JFET. Starting with a, a very small value of VDD, it would work up through an ohmic region. In other words, it would do one of these things. Here's the VDS and the ID. So we'd start going through an ohmic region and then eventually this thing would plateau, right? We would get a pinch off right here. This would be the V pinch off. And then eventually we would hit a breakdown and this thing would take off, right? So we basically have this ohmic region back here. We have a constant current region and then we have a breakdown region. It looks just like, at least so far, just like um, our JFET, right? This current right here being the IDSS. That's this guy. Now, as we go negative, on that gate, uh, gate power supply, what ends up happening is it's probably best to think of this as like a capacitor. You can imagine this metal layer as being one plate of the capacitor and then the um, channel as being the other plate, right? And this insulation layer is the, is the dielectric separating them. So when you put a negative potential out here, right, you build up a negative charge here and on the other side of the capacitor, so to speak, the other plate, we get all the pluses. 
So what does that do? That depletes this area of the channel of free charges. And result, when we take that VDD and start turning it up, we're going to get something that goes like this. Right? That current that we get is not going to be as high. So that's going to be out here somewhere. Right? I'll just put a point over here. As we go more and more negative, this situation just sort of magnifies. And we reach this pinch off sooner and sooner. We get something like that. And eventually, if we go far enough, we'll have completely squeezed off the channel. And all we will have is just maybe some little leakage current. So we will have produced a curve that goes like this. And this point, big surprise, you would call VGS off. In fact, this chunk of the curve is identical to what we saw with the JFET. It has the same exact equation. In other words, ID is equal to IDSS times 1 minus VGS over VGS off quantity squared. Right? It would still be true that GM equals GM0 times one a minus VGS over VGS off. It's still true, basically definitionally, that GM zero is equal to a negative two IDSS divided by VGS off. So far, this is the same as our JFET. All right, now, the difference comes in and that we can go to enhancement mode. So in enhancement mode, we go to a positive voltage over here. And now, again, using this capacitor idea, you think of those as pluses. Now, these are minuses. What are we doing? This is end channel, end material. We are, in fact, enhancing the conductivity of this channel. We're going to get more current. So now this curve, instead of IDSS being the max, it can go even higher than that. So this curve can extend out into the first quadrant. This is unique in that this device works in both first and second quadrants. It's the only device we've seen so far that does that. Bipolars are strictly first quadrant. JFETs are strictly second quadrant. So these equations can be extended these VGS values can be positive up to some maximum value. You know, we get up to some value, maybe 20, 30 volts, and it's enough to punch through this insulation layer, layer damage the FET, you know, goodbye FET. All right? So that much of it's really good. It also turns out that the model, the AC uh, model for this thing, is the same as it is for our JFET. In other words, we have a GM VGS for a current source. We have an R gate source over here, which we approximate as infinity once again. As a matter of fact, the uh, DC and low frequency uh, input impedance for the uh, MOSFET is even higher than it is for a JFET. It's huge. The symbol for this looks like so. This line right here that I just drew is... Uh, the channel, so to speak. Out here is the gate. So this is um, sometimes, the old days, used to call these IGFETs, insulated gate, MOSFET. So this is kind of the insulation they're trying to draw there. Right, here's your source. Substrate comes in here. It may or may not be tied back to the source. And then there's the drain. So that's your N channel symbol, right? So that's the channel. Remember, the arrow always points towards the N material. So all of the stuff that we did with JFETs, all of the biasing, the amplifier models, all of that stuff, it's identical for a MOSFET. Yay! But the MOSFET can do something else. It can work in first quadrant. So that actually leads to a very interesting form of bias that you can't really do with a JFET, which is called zero bias. It's really a form of fixed gate bias. 
And essentially, I'll just draw a quick version of it. It would look something like this. We don't have um, a voltage applied, a DC voltage applied to the gate of the FET. So I don't need an input coupling cap back here. And I don't have a resistor out in the source, so this is not swamped. But you'd have something like this. Now, when you look at this circuit, the source is at ground, and there is no external voltage on the gate, so VGS here is zero. If that's the case, then the drain current must be equal to IDSS, right? Here's zero, and this is IDSS, so you immediately know what the current is. You also know that your GM must be GM zero. All right, so that's kind of a unique little bias. It's not super stable, but it's a very simple bias. All right, and it you know, works reasonably well in that case. All right, so moving over to our cousin, if you will, an eMOSFET. Um, this is enhancement mode only, which kind of gives you a clue, given what we just did, kind of gives you a clue in how it works. DE MOSFETs are sometimes referred to as normally on. Because after all, Without a bias, in other words, sitting right here, you get current flow, kind of like this zero bias. E-MOSFETs are sometimes referred to as normally off, because they require a bias. Now, the construction of it is kind of similar. So, here's my, again, I'm going to do this for an end channel. Here's the P-substrate. Here's my channel. Drain source. The difference here is that um, instead of, I'm, I'm going to alter this in just a sec, instead of um, just having the insulation layer here and the metallization on top of it, this P substrate basically extends up like this. But I wanted to draw it the original way so that you could see that this is in fact the channel, but you've sort of interrupted the channel. The way this is actually manufactured um, it's, you know, built more like a layer cake. So you'd have your substrate, um, this, well, a base, you got your substrate. And then if this area was going to be the gate, you would diffuse into here two wells, one for the source and one for the drain. You'd put your insulation layer out like this, metallization, and your connections would go out to your source drain like that. This guy would be built the same way. You wouldn't literally have it on the sides the way I'm drawing it. Um, it just, you know, it's convenient to draw that way. So this is really the way it would be sort of built, okay? You would diffuse in a, a source and a drain simultaneously. Um, in any case, let me add the rest of this, just like we had before. I'm going to return the source back here. Now, in this case, I'm going to use a positive gate power supply, gate resistor, and finally connecting up to the gate terminal. So again, this is an insulation layer, and that is a metallization. All right, so how does this guy function? Well, look, it's pretty obvious with this P substrate in here. That's a basically a huge energy hill. Um, with zero or any negative voltage you would have on the gate, you're not going to get any current. Nothing's going to happen. However, if we look at going positive for VGS, so here's the ID value. If we go positive, we can think of the enhancement mode that we had over here, which I used a blue pen for. So if this is positive, again, thinking of this sort of capacitor model, what ends up happening is you get all these negative charges over here. If this is big enough, if this voltage is positive enough, you can inject so much that this area right in here actually looks like end material. We have a nice name for that. We call that an n-type inversion layer. So you've inverted its type. 
right? It's actually P material, but you've injected so many electrons there that it actually looks like, behaves like it was N material, right? Because that's all N material is. It just has a, a you know, a net uh, negative charge, right? All right, so what does that do? Well, that allows current flow, basically. So we'll get our, again, electron flow. We'll get our electron flow. Boom, 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 boom. Right, back to the source. Everybody's happy. So here's what ends up happening on the curve. You get no current until you get to a certain point where this inversion layer is sufficient to draw current. And at that point, the curve will start to take off, just like it does over here. What you're really doing is you're taking this curve and you're just shifting it. Instead of being over here in the second quadrant, you're shifting it so that it's in the first quadrant. This is what we would have called VGS off. Now we call it VGS threshold, right? VGS TH. That's basically the same thing, right? Guess what? This is a square law curve. So if we define an operating point out here, in other words, an ID on and a VGS on, we can write an equation for this, right? We can't use this equation anymore because IDSS doesn't exist, right? IDSS is the drain current with a shorted gate source, which here would be zero, right? We don't have that. We still get this kind of set of curves. The drain curves still look like this. You know, you turn up the voltage and you get these various levels, right? Except you would be starting down here and working your way up rather than starting at IDSS and working your way down. But it would be similar. You'd have the same three zones. You'd still have the ohmic region, the constant current region, and the breakdown region, right? Well, what does this equation actually look like? Well, the ID value is equal to a proportionality constant K, which is a function of the FET, you know, kind of like beta for a bipolar. VGS, in other words, where you're actually biased, right, where you are here, minus VGS threshold quantity squared. And this equation is valid as long as VGS is uh, bigger than, bigger than uh, VGS threshold and less than some you know, maximum value out here, right, where the same thing would happen. If the voltage gets too large, you're going to punch through that installation layer and you basically destroy the FET. All right, so we would say that VGS has to be greater than or equal to VGS threshold, but no larger than some max value, right, dependent on the construction of the device. Because this equation, you know, just describes, describes a curve that goes like this, and we only use part of that, all right? Um, if you take the derivative of this, you can find out what your GM is. So GM would be 2 times K times the quantity VGS minus VGS threshold, all right? Now the units for K are going to be in amps per squared volt. If you think about that for a second, um, amps over volts is Siemens, so that's the same in Siemens per volt. Right, transconductance per volt, basically where you're biased out here, okay? Now, because this is enhancement only, none of the JFET biasing schemes will work with this. The AC model is the same. We're still going to have this. Yay, yay, yay. So there's nothing really new to learn when it comes to figuring out a common source amplifier if you're going to use a, an eMOSFET. That stuff is all the same. Um, but the biasing has to be different. This requires a forward bias. So you could do something like this. Oh, I should in indicate what your uh, symbol looks like, right? It's normally off, so we draw the channel as a dashed line. Here is the source. Here is the gate. Your substrate would come out like this. Again, pointing in if it's an end channel. And again, this could either be a fourth lead or it could be tied back to the source and then your drain, all right? So the solid line is the normally on DE. Just think it's you know, easy for current to go down through the solid line. And over here, the dashed line is the off. You know, it sort of breaks, all right? It breaks the flow, so it's normally off. Um, in any case, we could do something like this for a bias. Oops. 
right? You got an amplifier coming out like this. Um, you could use like a little voltage divider affair. In which case, these two resistors would set up a gate voltage, okay? And your source over here would be a ground, so that would set up your VGS. In other words, you would just have some VGS value that would give you a current. If you have uh, some known value of ID and VGS, you can solve this equation in terms of K and then use that K value here to find the appropriate value of GM. And then you just use that GM in all the equations we looked at. In other words, um, in this case, you would have a non-swamped amplifier, so you know the gain would be a negative GM times RL, right? So whatever value of GM you, plug, you got over here, you'd plug into this equation, and off you go, right? So you can just think of this as sort of a superset compared to the, the JFET. You know, this, this DE MOSFET does everything the JFET does, plus it works in the first quadrant. The E MOSFET is kind of like taking this whole thing and shifting it up. Another way of looking at this, this E MOS, because most of your power MOSFETs are E MOSFETs, you could do a direct comparison with a bipolar. So um, a bipolar transistor would have a similar kind of characteristic out in the first quadrant. It would just be steeper. You know, it would do something like this, okay? Uh, you know, your old 0 0.6, 0 0.7 over there. Whereas this VGS threshold, you know, that might be a volt. Who knows? Right? It depends on the design. This is not usually going to be as steep. So again, you, you know, you get really good um, gain potential out of the bipolars. But, you know, this is going to be a lower distortion, first of all. And power FETs are very fast devices, so we use those a lot in switching devices like Class D amplifiers and uh, switching power supplies, things like that. They're very efficient in that regard. Okay, so there you go for your MOSFETs. Basically, your um, sort of superset JFET, kind of like uh, a power bipolar transistor in some ways. The biasing is different, obviously. The way you generate the GM compared to the air prime e and so forth is different. But still, ultimately, it's a controlled current source. Voltage controlled rather than, rather than current controlled. Huge input impedance. And there we have it.